More often than not, there are little details that slip through the cracks in our favorite games. In Bioshock 1 alone, there are 122 audio diaries, and with it comes knowledge of Rapture that you wouldn't know without collecting them. This series will go into depth about specific characters and their role in the grand scheme of things. I want to go over the specific characters' history to properly explain to you guys just who they are and how their actions affected the city and the people around them. Stay tuned till the end of the video, as I'll be asking you guys to vote for the next person I'm going to cover. For now, let's begin with quite possibly the most evil and ingenious villain in the Bioshock universe, the man who would become Atlas, Frank Fontaine. Frank grew up in the Bronx, New York, at an orphanage before running away to pursue a job as a stage boy. After having three years of experience in theater, he picked up a few tricks that would prove useful to him much later in his life. He changed his last name several times and settled on Frank Goland, even going as far as to have a birth certificate forged. Through a series of lies and deception, Frank managed to get a bar and a large sum of money by convincing a boxer that his staged fight outcome had changed. While working as a bartender, he met a federal agent named Voss, who had been investigating none other than the infamous Andrew Ryan. After a few meetings and inquiries, Frank was a little intrigued by the money Ryan was investing for his North Atlantic project. A chain of interrogations led Frank to the smuggler who was providing Ryan's workers with fish. Frank met with the owner, also named Frank, of the fishing fleet called Fontaine's Fisheries and convinced him to run to Cuba. Claiming that the owner was being set up for a drug smuggling scheme, Frank also convinced him to hand over the entire fishing fleet in exchange for money to flee the country. After firing all the workers of the fishery, they met on a boat in the middle of the ocean. With no witnesses, he drowned the owner and tossed his corpse into the sea. He took over his identity to be closer to Ryan, and thus his first major persona was born, Frank Fontaine. The rest is history, and it took Fontaine no time at all to convince Ryan to allow him into the city. Along with several of his workers from the other businesses he owned and the new employees he hired for the fishing fleet, he started smuggling in items from the surface into Rapture. He continued his life of crime and used various identities to commit them to ensure his main identity was intact. To Fontaine's luck, Bridget Tenenbaum discovered the sea slug that would start the chain of events that led to his uprising. I saw one of these smugglers having a game of catching on the docks today. And this surprised me because his hands were crippled during the war. He was unloading the barge the other day when he was bitten from this sea slug. He woke up the next morning and he found he could move his fingers for the first time in years. I asked him if he still had that sea slug, as luck would have it. <laughs> He did. With Tenenbaum's research, she needed funding in order to unlock the secrets to what they called Adam, and so she turned to Fontaine for money. Spent the morning jawing with that kraut scientist. She's damaged goods all right. Just like all those chumps they scraped out of them prison camps. But she's no crackpot. She's gonna make me the kind of scratch that'll have Ryan look like he's running a paper route. She just needs some supplies to get the ball rolling and a friend to watch her back. Fontaine Futuristics was born, with Tenenbaum and Su Chong researching and developing the various plasmids that would come to flood the streets of Rapture. After some time, Tenenbaum learned that children were needed in order to properly harvest Adam, and with further research, found that only young girls would work to mass-produce it. Fontaine saw this as an opportunity to start to make his presence known to the underbelly of Rapture, and appeared to be charitable in the public eye. He created the Little Sisters Orphanage, and soon after, he took a page from Sophia Lam's book and made Fontaine's Home for the Poor to further increase his popularity. The augmentation procedure is a success. The slugs alone could not provide enough Adam for serious work, but combined with the host, now we have something. The slug is embedded in the lining of the host's stomach, and after the host feeds, we induce regurgitation. And then we have 20, 30 times yield of usable Adam. The problem now is the shortage of hosts. Fontaine says patience, Tannenbaum. Soon, the first home for little sisters will open. And that problem will be solved. 
This provided even more ways to conduct experiments by taking some of the nobodies in the underwater city. Ryan was proud to see someone make such a rise in Fontaine, proving his free market system to really thrive to its fullest potential. However, it came to Ryan's attention that not everything was what it seemed. Ryan learned quickly of Fontaine's crimes, but lacked any proof of the conspiracy. This began Ryan's pressuring and his increase in security to try to convict Fontaine. While this was happening, however, the final version of Elizabeth had been roaming around Rapture in search of a little sister named Sally. Fontaine, going by Atlas to anyone who didn't know him, threatened her to give him the key to his victory over Ryan in exchange for Sally's life. In between Elizabeth's venture through rifts to get what Atlas wanted, Fontaine was installing hidden security systems to have eyes and ears everywhere in the city. Soon after, he learned of Ryan's flame, Jasmine Jolene. She sold the child to Tenenbaum and sealed her fate once Ryan discovered that Fontaine was behind it. Fontaine ended up faking his death and re-emerged as Atlas, slowly building up the addicts to the plasmid he had mass-produced. These addicts are the splicers you find in the game, and with Atlas appearing as a hero in opposition to Ryan, it was easy to bring them to his side in the Civil War. Never play a man for the short con when you can play him for the long one. Atlas is the longest con of all. Ryan wanted Frank Fontaine dead. I just gave him what he wanted. As Atlas, I got a new face, a clean record, and a fresh start. Now, it's time to take him back, Rapture. It'll be so pleased. Oh, Mrs. McClintock, what are you doing here? Let me just turn this off. With Fontaine dead, Ryan shut down Fontaine Futuristics. However, Atlas still had access to a lab to continue producing plasmids. Splicers would lead attacks on several major businesses and terrorize the public, forcing Ryan to increase security measures even further and causing havoc throughout the city. Elizabeth returned in the heat of the Civil War and Atlas, as desperate as ever, threatened the life of the little sister, Sally, once again. She delivered what he had wanted, the ace in a hole that Atlas needed to defeat Ryan. With the child of Ryan in his back pocket, and the ability to brainwash the child, Atlas forged his plan with the help of Su Chong. Advanced deployment, lot 111, Dr. Su Chong, client, Fontaine Futuristics. Baby is now a year old, weighs 58 pounds, and possesses gross musculature of a fit 19 year old. The results are disappointing but within expected tolerances. After some time had passed, Ryan finally managed to lure Atlas in the corner, trapping him after gaining control of all the bathysters in Rapture. Ryan took control of the splicers away from Atlas, rendering him helpless and forcing him to use his sleeper agent, Jack. The events of the game take place, and Jack is boarded onto a plane doomed to crash into the ocean. Led by the phrase that Elizabeth provided him, Atlas led Jack through the city until he came face to face with his father. After Ryan was killed, there was no reason to keep the charade up. Atlas was no longer needed, and Fontaine was back, seemingly from the dead. He explained to Jack of his plan in full, taking the plasmids and Adam to the surface and becoming powerful off of the wealth, having control of both Rapture and the surface. Once Jack breaks through the mental conditioning of the WYK mind control, he chases after Fontaine through the city, half turning into a big daddy. On their way to his lair, Jack obtains a little sister's syringe as Fontaine begins to continuously inject himself with Adam. Once they confront each other, Fontaine is no longer recognizable. Growing into a monster completely dependent on the drug he manufactured, the final and climactic battle begins. Fontaine seemingly had the upper hand, however, before dealing the finishing blow, the little sister Jack saved poured in after another, extracting all of the atom in Fontaine's body. Just a husk of a man, an empty shell, Fontaine dies at last, with the hero Jack saving all of his so-called monsters, taking them to the surface. Frank was an ingenious con man and business tycoon. No matter what stood in his way, he used people as tools to climb further and further up the ladder. He gained power through horrible means, and his death was ironic in a sense that all of his creations betrayed him, leading to his demise. Atlas slash Fontaine is one of the most memorable characters in Bioshock, and I absolutely had to cover him first. For the next person I cover, I want you to decide, Lady Comstock or Sophia Lamb. Making these Bioshock videos is so fun, and I never get tired of revisiting this series and reading all of your wonderful comments. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It may be a bit different than the usual stuff we do, but I hope it's received well. If you want more of these, let me know by leaving a like, commenting on the video, follow us on Twitter, at Illegible Monster. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.